Hey guys, if you're enjoying the content that I'm making, please click that subscribe button. Also remember to click that bell button and make sure to tick that box to send all notifications so you don't miss out on any videos. With that in mind, let's get on with the video. What's up guys, welcome to Moshkins Gaming, where we take your gaming to the next level. This is Moshkins logging in to bring you another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. And welcome to my video guide on Garland's event, The Cycle of Battle. And of course, we are going to be going, to be going through the Chaos Fight. Now before we do start, I would just like to gently remind you guys if you haven't already to please make sure you click that subscribe button and leave a like on this video if you do enjoy this content that I am making. There are plenty more on my channel. I am trying to reach that 1000 subscribers by the end of the year so every single subscriber is going to help me reach that goal. So without further ado, let's get on with this video. Now, as always, we will be starting off with the weaknesses, resistances, and elements that the, bo the boss can absorb. This time around, it is the Colorless Queen. The Colorless Queen does not have any weaknesses, nor it can absorb any elements. It does, however, have a times 2 resistance to magic attacks. As for its abilities, at first, it has Light of Doom, which is a recast ability. It increases the Brave when the Brave is less than its initial Brave, and will do a group magic Brave attack plus an HP attack. And this will also grant itself a shield from level 150 onwards. Next is Redemption, which is a magic Brave attack. Lunge, which is a melee HP attack. Heavenly Wave, which is a group magic Brave attack. Brain of Brainstone, which increases its Brave again when its Brave is less than its initial Brave, and it will again do a Magic Brave attack plus an HP attack. Next is Colorless Spear, which is a Magic Brave attack. Next is Shadow Thorns, which is a Magic Brave attack that can inflict initial Brave down. Now the next ability it has is basically when it reaches a certain HP percentage, it, there will be a text that will say and canonly it smirks. This basically raises the attack, defense, speed, initial brave and also its max brave. Next it will have another text at a certain HP percentage, sinister, sinisterly <laughs> it smirks which again raises its attack, defense, speed, initial brave and Max Brave as well, more than uncannily it smirks. Next is Ruination Field. This prohibits the summoning. However, you will still have the blessing. The blessing remain. Uh, the blessing effect will remain basically. This also has a plus version, and it again will prohibit summoning. But the blessing will remain. This time around, it will raise its turn rate. And then it will have a chance of inflicting a debuff on all the enemies. And the debuff cycle goes from Paralyze. And the next turn it will do a defense down. The next turn it will do a poison. And then it will do an attack down. And the cycle will repeat itself. Okay, so now that we know the resistances, the weaknesses, and what elements they can absorb, and of course its abilities, it's time to take a look at some general tips and guide. And the very first one I have for you guys is to save about maybe 70% of your abilities on the last boss. Uh, this is actually a little bit more flexible because honestly we only have 65 turns in order to do a complete run if you're you know, if you want to do one complete run for everything, again, you can just rerun this fight and get all those missions separately. But if you want a complete run, then you may have to use maybe, you know, even like 40% of your abilities and save about 60 to 70% of your abilities. So it's a really tight squeeze uh, in terms of ability management in this fight. Now the next tip I have for you guys is to bring in the boosted characters. Of course, there's Garland, the Warrior of Light, and of course Sephiroth and also Fang. I do believe they are quite effective in this fight. Now Sephiroth 
is a character that uh, let's just say a little bit behind you know it's not like he's got his level 70 awakening yet so I don't know how effective he will be in the chaos fight however obviously the three Fang, Warrior of Light and Garland will be really effective now if you don't have any of these characters the other characters that you may want to consider bringing are Cloud, Noctis, Ranza or even Titus Noctis will start to I guess fade away after this event it's not like he is really useless it's just that he doesn't have his 70 awakening so he'll start to fall off so I have seen some people actually reporting that Noctis is still quite effective and they managed to do a complete run with Noctis in their team it's just gonna depend on your party composition now as for healers plus brave battery options, I do have sure Lotta here and I just want to do a special mention which I haven't really done, uh, which is on Porum. I know Porum isn't exactly a character that stands out, but uh, I did hear from previous, like, you know, uh, reports that Porum actually helped in the early chaos as well so I do want to do a little mention of Porum and let me know how effective she is because I actually didn't get her EX weapon so I couldn't actually you know bring her in this fight if I did I might have tried her out but alas I I am stuck with Sherlotta and I'm not complaining at all now as for the summon, again you do have an option between the three, Ifrit, Shiva, and Ramu. It's just gonna depend on how you wanna work your party compositions. If you need more attack, then you obviously bring Ifrit. If you need a little bit more speed, which I kind of recommend, then you bring in Shiva and of course Ramu for more max brave and that defense up as well. Okay, so now that I've given you guys a little bit of tips, let's take a look at the strategy that I used to beat this fight. Now let's start off with the friend support. There are obviously quite a few to choose from. And I do recommend bringing a cloud that is obviously has its EX plus weapon fully max limit broken. The other options are obviously Charlotta, even though the boss has a times 2 resistance to magic, Charlotta doesn't really do brave damage. So she's just a brave battery and will do the damage that way. And of course, if you have a rare friend with a Dark Knight Cecil support, obviously it's gonna make things a lot easier reaching that, uh, that elusive score that is very hard to get in the Chaos fight. Now my next tip is to use your summon after two rotations of Ruination Field. Now you can probably get away with maybe after the first Ruination Field depending on how lucky you are with Paralysis if you are using your own Cloud of course. If you are pretty lucky with the Paralysis then by all means you can use your summon a little bit earlier. Uh, the there is a high suggestion that actually use your summon as as early as you can therefore it won't use the ruin, ruination field and therefore you can do as much damage as you can as early as possible but I do highly recommend waiting a little bit it's just a little bit safer um, the only problem with obviously with waiting with ru ruination field is if you have bad luck with paralysis then yeah you're gonna lose a couple of turns that way that's why a lot of people highly suggest you just use it early now my next tip is to bring warrior of light because warrior of light shields will stop the boss from doing any brave damage at all as long as you keep that up this is actually way way easier than um, Fang's Lost Chapter, uh, the Chaos Fight, because this boss doesn't actually hit that hard, which is kind of surprising. So uh, I do highly recommend bringing Warrior of Light and using his shields. Now the next tip I have for you guys here is 
Actually, don't be afraid to use your abilities on the earlier waves this time around. And I mentioned this earlier on the tips as well, but I do want to reiterate this because we only have 65 turns in order to complete the run. So if you can get away, if you notice like after a couple of runs and you notice, oh, I actually have extra two cross lashes, you can probably use those on the earlier waves to save some time. And that will save you like two to three turns depending on how high your max brave is. So don't be afraid to use them. Obviously try to save, like I said, maybe 60 to 70% of your abilities. But I just want to reiterate this because this actually stopped me from getting a complete run a few times where I was saving too much of my abilities because I felt like, oh, this is chaos. I'll need all my abilities for the last boss. But that's not entirely the case in this one. Now my last tip is, well, luck. Hopefully you have luck because luck is also a factor in this fight and you just have to pray you don't get paralyzed especially if you don't have any immunity to uh, the debuffs obviously uh, Lena is one of the best ones to actually you know protect you from this and Afmao as well uh, from memory can do this as well however you know, Lena it hits like a wet noodle right now, so I don't know how effective she will be uh, as an as a buffer, a initial brave buffer. You know, a brave regen. She's still pretty good. Uh, I just don't know how effective she is. I haven't had a chance to play around with her in during the chaos era. Uh, I highly used her on the cosmos era. That's why I felt like I've. I've been using her too much and I, I want to use someone else but in any case you know if you like I said if you don't have uh, either Lena or Aphmau you just pray you don't get paralyzed that's it okay so now that we are done with the tips or slash strategy it's time to take a look at some possible party compositions and the first one like I said this is going to be the boosted team with Garland the Warrior of Light Fang or Sephiroth with a cloud support with a Shiva summon basically the idea here I feel like leaving out Sephiroth is the way to go because Honestly, Warrior of Light is essential in this fight, especially with his shields. And of course, if you have Fang fully max limit broken as well, she's really gonna help you with those debuffs and she can launch as well. Plus, her additional ability increases the HP damage that the boss will take by 20% if you have her bloomed up as well. Uh, I do believe it's the bloom one that gives the extra 20%. In any case, you will do a lot more HP damage, which is something that you really, really want to do in this fight. Because you only have 65 turns. And I don't think I've said that enough. You only have 65 turns. It's crazy. Now the next party composition I have here is the War of Light Cloud and Ramza, which is what you guys are seeing here. And this is with a Quistis support. Uh, <laughs> I know that I didn't mention Quistus in the friend support section uh, on my tips. However, I felt like because there was only one boss, delaying the boss was actually a good idea, and it actually worked out for me. And I don't know how if how effective Quistus will be for you guys, but. It definitely worked out for me and this is with a Shiva summon because I really wanted that extra speed and of course inflicting the boss with a turn rate down also helps out. Um, again the War of Light is just for the shields and Cloud is obviously for DPS and Ramza can skip a couple of turns, uh, you know turn save basically with his HP attack plus 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 he also has that uh, unique debuff, debuff that he can apply as well, which is really, really great. I actually really debated whether to put Quistis in the uh, friend support section on my tips. However, I felt like there was already three characters that I suggested and I just didn't want to, you know, confuse too many people with bringing all sorts of different supports. So I do highly suggest, you know, those three that I mentioned 
Quistis is just a unique case for me. Uh, I wasn't really expecting it, but it turned out okay. So if you really want to use Quistis as well, just like I did, you're more than welcome, of course, to do that. I'm not here to tell you off. Okay, so the next team that I have for you guys here is Titus, Warrior of Light, and Charlotta with a Cloud support. And of course, this is with a Ramu Summon. Now, obviously, I would highly recommend if you are planning to use Titus that you max limit break Titus. This will effectively make things a lot easier for you in terms of damage wise. Although Titus will not be as effective as he was in Fang's Lost Chapter, I feel like, because much of Titus's kit, like, well, his EX attack anyway, is splitting the damage 100% AoE's HP attacks. Seeing that there is only one boss, it's not really using it to its full potential. However, it is still a pretty dang good damage, so I think Titus is strong enough to actually carry your team in terms of DPS. Again, if you have fully max limit broken his EX+. Plus. Now the last one I have for you guys here is a little bit surprising. Again, I had, you know, I looked through Reddit, I looked through Facebook groups and such to find like the most unique um, party compositions. And this is something that I've come across and I just want to give a shout out to, I hope I'm saying this right, Ozeros A0 is the one who posted this. Uh, and he used Cloud Vein and Charlotta with a Vincent support and with a Ramu summon. So basically, the idea here is to switch in Vincent uh, with your Vein, basically, and to use the Beast Beast Flare and inflict an initial Brave Down uh, debuff, and alongside with Charlotta's like sap-like debuff with her HP attack. Plus, this basically makes the boss's brave go down to zero every single turn it has. Now, of course, there is a little caveat here that you will have to keep paralyzing the boss so it doesn't get that smirk or whatever and increase its initial brave and therefore, you know, nulling the effectiveness of this strategy. Like eventually it will have a higher initial brave and it won't go down straight to zero. However, for those early turns or the early stages of the fight, it is actually pretty good. And of course, Vayne is very turn efficient as well. His damage isn't probably gonna be, you know, shocking but you do have cloud in this uh, party composition so i believe dps wise you should be fine even though you don't have warrior of light here obviously charlotta can heal through a lot of the hp damage just don't get broken because yeah that's gonna definitely gonna kill your uh, team or even just one of your characters and that will be game over so we are finally at the end of this video and of course I would like to give you guys my final thoughts on this fight. Honestly speaking, this is a lot easier than Fang's Lost Chapter Chaos fight. Uh, this I felt like it was a breath of fresh air for, for some reason. It's still very difficult, don't get me wrong, but Fang's Lost Chapter was just on a whole nother level. Having two bosses on is definitely gonna make things harder. So in this fight where there's only one boss, oh, I can I even use Quistis as my support. I wasn't expecting to clear it with her, but I did manage to do it. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the result. And like I said, you know, overall, if I'm gonna compare this, this is definitely harder than the first Chaos fight we got with the Crystal Awakening but definitely a lot less um, harder than Fang's Lost Chapter. The only thing that I really hate about this fight is that luck does play a, a bit of a factor in this fight, especially if you get paralyzed. It's really, really annoying. And especially if your Ramza gets paralyzed as well, if you are planning to use Ramza, 
I would highly suggest to make sure at two turns you refresh your buffs because if you try to push it as much as you can and you get some bad luck with it you end up losing that uh, buff and if you lose your shout buff that's yeah that that's a game over you need to repeat straight away okay so I think I'll end the video right here please remember to click like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video and if you found that this video was informative at all all as always i'd like to hear from you guys what you think of this fight did you actually have a harder time uh, here than fang's lost chapter or did you find it that fang's lost chapter was actually harder let me know down in the comments below and of course your team compositions for this fight leave it all down in the comments below as well and again, a gentle reminder that I am trying to get that 1,000 subscribers. So every subscribe really, really helps me out. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media. I am on Twitter and I'm also on Facebook at Munchkins Gaming. This is Munchkins logging off and I'll see you guys in the next level.